During its 13-year lifespan, the full-size iPod saw all sorts of changes and improvements. The first-generation iPod featured a 5GB hard drive and a spinning control surface. I made a whole video about this player that you should go check out, but this is really where it all started. A thousand songs right in your pocket. Compared to later iPods, this one is really very simple. For instance, it just used a standard Firewire 400 cable. There's no dock connector or any sort of control, just a simple cable between it and your Mac. The second generation iPod made a few small improvements over the first. It offered a larger hard drive and a cover over the Firewire port, and Apple swapped out the moving scroll wheel for a touch sensitive one. But this is where hell froze over, and Apple added iTunes support for Windows. New for 2003, the third generation iPod brought a bunch of changes. Instead of controls being placed around the circle, this iPod used four buttons underneath the display that lit up red when the backlight was on. This is the first iPod to include the dock connector. It also included the small iPod accessory port on the top next to the headphone jack. This connector would allow such accessories as this wired remote, but would be short-lived as Apple would soon roll the functionality into the dock connector. In the summer of 2004, Apple introduced its most refined iPod yet. This model included the famous click wheel pioneered on the iPod mini. It allowed a user to scroll and click using just one component. The whole thing sort of rocked around the center as you went around. It was both genius and simple, and my guess is that when most people think of an iPod, this is the model that comes to mind. There are two models of iPod based on the fourth generation that you should know about. The first is the iPod Photo, the first music player from Apple to include a color screen and the ability to view photos synced over from a computer. The second is the iPod U2 Special Edition that came in a custom black and red case. In the box was a $50 iTunes gift card for the complete U2, a quote, digital box set from the band. This set off a rather weird relationship between Apple and U2 that unfortunately is still in play today. In October 2005, Apple announced the new fifth generation iPod. With now up to a 60 gigabyte hard drive, this one is special because it included a larger 2.5 inch screen. The reason for the upgrade? This iPod could play TV shows and movies purchased from the iTunes store. In addition to the classic white look, this iPod was also available in black. In the fall of 2007, Apple renamed its full-size music player the iPod Classic. The front was now made of aluminum and could be purchased in either silver or black. This iPod would be on sale for seven years before Apple finally killed it off in 2014. When pressed, Apple said it could no longer source the 1.8 inch hard drives at the heart of the music player, and the full-size iPod slipped into history. <laughs> 